Hello, freaks. Welcome back to the second episode of A Known Freak, the podcast, and the very first episode of A Known Freak, the podcast that is coming to you live with visuals. So I'm now recording video of this podcast too, which I'll post little snippets of it on my Instagram and on YouTube at Katie Killian. So you can check them out there if you want to see some special content that is only available for the viewers. I'm doing some stuff for them right now. All right, so you can get more of that if you watch the podcast too. So I'm gonna get right into it today and start off with some announcements. First of all, I just wanna say thank you if you're here because I have some notes for myself. Sorry, I'm gonna close the door because my dog. Um, that is something I got a dog. I Well, I already had this dog. It's my family's dog. It's a husky named Pepper. She's beautiful. If you knew me before 2015, you've probably met her. Um, and she lived with my family for a while, and now she lives with me in Burbank. And it's been the greatest blessing of my life. I love being a single mom so much. It made me realize how many people really do have dogs in couples whenever I go to the dog park. Um, I am the minority in singleness, not in race. I'm very aware of my white privilege. Um, and unfortunately, I thought I had more of it because... The other day I got a ticket and when the the officer came over to me, I said he rolled down the window. I rolled through a stop sign. Um, yeah, well, I, I California stopped, which is, a, I guess, a thing. It's where you like partially stop and then keep going. Um, and I did that. And then the cop came up to me on a motorcycle and I rolled down my window and I said, it's a great day for Blue Lives Matter, huh, sir? And smiled at him and said, thank you for your service. And he still gave me a fucking, like, $500 ticket. So nothing matters, ACAB. Um, I did, in fact, if you listened to the end of last week's episode, I don't know how many of you did, but till the very end, I said that I wanted to interview somebody who went to TanaCon, specifically somebody who had a medical emergency at TanaCon and... Wow, booyah, we fucking did it. So stay tuned for that. I will be interviewing an actual TanaCon guest who, and I know this is crazy. Oh my God, I can't believe some of you just saw my feet for free. If that doesn't get you to want to watch the, you know, fine, you guys get to look at it. Um, if that doesn't get you want to watch the video podcast, then I don't know. You're fucking prude. But yeah, my feet are in it. My ugly ass feet that my mom ruined for me by having ingrown toenail surgery so I could never sell feet pics because she knew I would do that. Um, but she wanted me to work at acting and show business and force me to rely on making money through my talents and not just my fucking toes, which I wish I could. If I could just make a living selling feet pics, I really would do that and then just adopt a bunch of dogs and have a podcast or some shit. But um, yeah, so next announcement, the elephant in the room. This is a podcast episode I did not want to make. This is not what I wanted to come on here to say to you guys. But yeah, so I'm sure you all saw that Matt's season of The Bachelor, the girls, well, half of the girls, uh, more than half of the girls came out of the closet as gay. And so now there is no season of The Bachelor. Yep, never wanted to make that announcement. No, unfortunately, yeah, I didn't make it on the pod. I didn't make it on the... I'm looking into my own eyes in this video and getting lost. That's how much I love myself. I didn't make it on this season of The Bachelor. Um, and yeah, that was a loss for me. That was a big blow to me. But it's okay because a lot of people did tell me it would be hard to be taken seriously if I went on The Bachelor. Um, and I do want to act in some A24 films eventually. So you know what? It's fine. Also, um, I really... You guys are going to think I'm joking right now, but the reason that I wanted to go on that show and my friends know this and they laughed at me for it is for love. My heart is in it for the right reasons. Uh, Hannah Ann, I understand you now, babe. My heart is in it for the right reasons. I want love. And I did think I could find love on TV. I still think I could find love on TV. Um, I still believe in love. I'm still romantic, even though I've had my heart crashed into a million pieces before. But um, I just have trust issues, so I just need a little time to warm up. But yeah, I did. 
I I realize if I had gone on The Bachelor, the odds of me actually leaving with a husband are pretty low because I'm so fucking crazy that they would probably pin me as a drama character. And as much as I would love that, you know, I'm that's not who I am in relationships, which I think is funny because I'm really crazy. But when it comes to relationships, I'm very chill. I'm very nice. I am a really good listener and great at blowjobs. So I don't understand why I'm still single. But um, moving on to the next announcement, it's October. You know what that means. It's my favorite month. There's a reason I released my podcast this month. It's because it's the best month. And I just feel like something is missing right now. And I realize what it is. It's that I get anxiety when I don't have enough anxiety. People with anxiety, you might relate to that. But I have anxiety right now because I'm too chill. Like my life should be more stressful. And I realize it's because of this season of October, I am anticipating and I feel like I should be going on a nerve wracking Halloween Horror Nights date. Universal, my favorite date in the whole world. And every year I go on one that's always scary because not because of the event, but because of the social situations. I've been on so fucking many first date horror night things because I always ask men to take me there because it's the first date and then they usually end up paying for my ticket. And so it's a great way for me to get to go and um, get to know all the rides and the mazes so that when I take men there in the future that I actually care about, then I know where everything is and then I can act. Um, And by that, I mean put on some sexy show so like I'll tell the guy before I'll be like I'm super afraid of guys in pig masks and then they'll be like okay great and then um so I take them to a maze with a bunch of pig masks so that I can um fake a full panic attack on the floor ventilators have to come people have to take me out um and I usually wear something really slutty and that would look good on a stretcher so that they can see me like that um and it's like the thing of you want a man to see you lying down, you know, like how you would look at on. I'm sorry. I have a hair in my mouth. I got it. Um, another reason to watch a video podcast, you could have the satisfying release of seeing me take that out instead of just hearing me. But if you're just audio only, which this is in that's the primary way of digesting this I only really have video podcasts on in like the background I don't expect anyone to just stare at my face and watch this I really actually hope you don't do that that scares me just put me on in the back and occasionally if you want to look at me you, you know I'll throw a few of those in there that that's good um but what was I saying oh yeah so you know you want guys to see you lying down because it reminds them of sex so that's why I always fake a panic attack I fake passing out I fake losing my credit card on the floor um, of the club uh, and then I just like lay down and it also is a good way to get attention so that's my advice okay so I didn't talk about how I was uh, all right cut and then we're gonna cut here okay so I have been doing awesome I came on here to talk a little bit okay cut and we're cutting here great okay so this podcast is something that I want to be an honest space um as well as I want it to be fun so as I'm sure most of you guys know I'm a stoner and I have mental illness anxiety depression and ADHD and an eating disorder ongoing. I used to be anorexic. I'm not anorexic anymore. Um, but I do, I, every day is a battle. Every day is a battle. So anyway, I smoke a lot of marijuana to distract me from the brain ailments. But what I realized is during quarantine, that became way more of a crutch than I ever wanted it to be. And I ended up missing who I used to be not on weed when I wasn't high. And I realized that I had just been high literally all of quarantine. Like, I'm not kidding you guys. If I The only times that I wasn't high was work. Um, and I wasn't working that much. So, yeah. Mama realized she had a little bit of an issue. Not addicted. You can't be addicted to weed. I just loved it. So I stopped smoking weed almost completely this past week. And it's been honestly 
really amazing. I kind of feel a little bit more like my old self. I am definitely more annoying. I'll tell you that. I'm, I think, a lot more fun to hang out with on weed because I'm not as chill and my ADHD isn't as crazy and I'm not as bitchy because I am a bitch. I, I, that's like at the end of the day, I, I think I can be a bitch. As much as I am nice, I just sometimes say things and I'm like, God. So weed helps me not say those things, but I, unfortunately for you guys, will be cutting back, so I might be more of a bitch, but um, at least I will not sound so stupid, because that was another big note for me. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. Oh, here comes my puppy. Heifer, come say hi to them. Instead of just being an ominous shadow in the background. Okay, guess not. Um, you might see her. She just sat down next to me. Hang on. That's her. That's Pepper. Do you have anything you want to say, Pepper? Nice. Okay, welcome back, everybody. I just went to the bathroom and now I'm back. I am here to tell you about our new segment, which is called, drumroll please, The Narcissistic Thought of the Day. This is something that me and my best friend, Claire do on a daily basis where we will share a narcissistic thought that we have had, which usually proves to be an insight into what it's like being, for lack of a better word, a hot girl in the Los Angeles dating community. Because, e yikes. So today's narcissistic thought of the day is a real conversation that I had with my best friend, Claire, which who will come on the podcast. Don't you worry, guys. She um, is the fucking queen. And we are talking about Hinge. So I'm on Hinge, um, which if you don't know, it's a dating app. It's me and her's favorite dating app. And here's where the narcissism comes in. We were discussing how Hinge is for the people that are better than all the other dating apps. I'm sorry, but it's true. I mean, I'm above Bumble. I'm above Tinder. You are too, probably. I say probably because honestly, probably not all of you are. To be honest, a lot of you still probably have a lot of lessons to learn. Um, I'm looking at you, cis white men. But yeah, we were talking about how the people on Hinge are usually people who are usually, okay, if you have a Hinge horror story and you're like, yeah, I met this dude who thought he was actually a werewolf and the only way he would fuck me was if he let, he put on his 15 piece fursuit when it was a full moon, whatever. Like, I don't care. I don't want to hear your horror story because to me and for me, Hinge has been the best. And I think it is people who are traditionally better than the other dating apps. It's also just the best format. You can ask fun questions. Um, you can, you know, respond to other things. So yeah. And then another narcissistic thought of the day that I'm going to throw in there is something that I was saying out loud. I was talking about my ex and he expected us to still be friends after, which I was like, okay, well, this guy clearly has never had dealt with a hot girl then because hot girls um, usually are going to be like, I'm going to stop generalizing and just talk about for me, okay? Because I'm trying to not offend anyone by saying hot girls are usually, you know what? Shut the fuck up. This is my podcast. This is me. I'm going to say for me, okay? This is my opinion. So if you don't like it, you know what? You can leave. But hot girls don't fuck with their exes as friends because they know that as soon as they get out of a relationship with the dumb fuck that was willing to lose them, the, there's a thousand guys waiting to date them fuck them fine not date them fuck them um and why would you be friends with your ex if you could go fuck somebody hotter right after i think it kind of just showed to me i was like oh you you don't deal with bad bitches a lot that's fine um i love being a bitch to my ex-boyfriends it's my favorite pastime because they have wounded me deeply and so it's fucking okay it's okay and here's my thing. I wasn't even going to talk about this this episode, but I'm going to right now because now I'm a little mad. See, this is what happens when I don't smoke weed. I get angry easier. Um, I have a tribe of women and men surrounding me who will 
fucking come for you if you break my heart. And I love it. There's no other way I would want it because I'm a mama bear. And if somebody breaks one of my baby's hearts, I consider my friends my babies. I'm very, very friendship oriented person. Um, if they do something wrong, of course, if they break up with them for for normal reason or they do it properly and they don't blindside them and stuff like that, I'm going to be like, OK, it's fine. You know, that's normal. But if they're going to do something stinky, oh, ho, 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 you best believe I'm not just going to sit in my leather chair and continue to read Twilight. I'm going to get my horny ass up again, horny because I've been reading Twilight in a leather chair, which also turns me on the leather, the smell of it. Reading in a big leather chair. Oh my God, nothing is hotter. I might have to just go masturbate right now. We actually might have to take a masturbation break. Um, you can join me if you want. Next segment is the funnest segment, I think, of the podcast. It's the freakiest thing you've done this week. So when I have a guest, I'm going to ask them that too. But right now, because it's only me and Pepper, my dog, she's actually asleep right here. It's really cute. Um, the freakiest thing I've done this week, it, there's two of them. Okay. And I want you to play along too. So answer in the comments what the freakiest thing you've done this week is. Um, but for me, and you can try to out freak me. I would love you guys to out freak me. Oh my God, please out freak me. Well, the first thing I did was, it was an accident, but I, I full on pissed on my balcony, full on. So I was on my period this week. And when I'm on my period, I just turn into a pregnant woman. I'm horrified to see what I'm going to be like when I am pregnant, but it was not good. I was doing some yoga and I ended up going into happy baby, you roll on your spine and just without warning, without pressure, without force, full piss. If you're my roommate and you're listening to this, please, please don't worry. I cleaned it up. But yeah, I was full. I, I don't even know how it happened. I just, well, I do. I just like rolled my body forward. My vagina hole opened up, I guess, a little too wide and just glaciered on it. Not glaciered, geysered on it. Um, I wish it glaciered, glaciered on it. I wish I could pop ice crystals out of my pussy. I would not be here if I had that talent. But yeah, full on pissed on my balcony. It. I just laid there and I looked at all of the water and I was like, yeah, that, that came from me. For a second, I did think my water broke. Um, I was like, fuck, okay. I have been having so many dreams that I've been pregnant. And when you smoke a lot of marijuana, another reason I kind of laid back, kind of kind of laid back. I'm not going to say quit. I didn't quit. I never will quit marijuana. I will never quit weed. But um, it blends your dreams and reality. And I've been having so many dreams that I've been pregnant that I think, and I want to be pregnant so bad. I think about it a lot. I do, I guess I can just officially advertise this here because this is my, this is my show. I am a very traditional woman with what I want and it comes to a family. Hi, all of my roommates are outside waving to me. I love you guys. Um, this is amazing. I love you guys. Are you recording right now? I am. This is all on. No, it's kind of fun. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. That's part of the living with four roommates thing and I love it. I love Full House. I love Fuller House. I love Two by the Dozen. I love movies about big, crazy families, um, which leads me into what I was talking about. Big, crazy families. I, I want that. I want a big crazy family. I really do. I want like three to five kids. I want a husband or a wife with a, a dog and all of that. So if anybody's looking to have a lot of babies and to have a bounce house at the birthday parties, hit me up. Um, my second freakiest thing I've done this week is something that I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna get canceled for this, but I ate a little bit of my dog's food. Um, and I don't regret it. It tastes delicious. I used to do this when I was in high school and I would sometimes have to come back, um, real quick before cheer practice and I just needed a protein boost. So I would just grab like a handful of Pepper's food and just eat it. It's just like, I would think of it like beef jerky to me. And to be honest, I love the taste. Um, it, it's really nice organic dog food. I wouldn't buy anything that I wouldn't personally eat. Um, and the other day I was really hungry. I didn't have a lot of groceries in the house. And so 
yeah, I ate a little bit of her food. Um, it's dry dog food. I, I don't think I could do wet. Uh, I don't know, though. I'm really, I'm never going to say never. So you guys want to send me some wet dog food and I'll try it on the show? Be my guest. My address is... So, yeah. All right. And related to the freakiest thing you've done this week, we are also going to be having a new segment called Freak of the Week. And my Freak of the Week this week goes to the gas station attendant at Chevron on Victory because I was in there buying a vape and the sex pills were looking at me right in the eye. And I was like, you know, I'm just going to ask about them today. And I said, yo, how much for these orgasm pills? And she was like, she just, everything changed. Everything shifted. She was like, kind of like, you know, she's like grabbing my vape, like being chill. But when I asked about the sex pills, she stopped what she was doing. She looked me right in the eyes and she said, they work. (laughs) Let me tell you, they work from personal experience worth every cent that's what she said to me and so i was like okay well fuck yeah bitch you're fucking but then she told me that they were like seven bucks and i was like "Ah, this vape is already taking me out bro so maybe next time but she told me in explicit detail how she had the best squirting orgasm of her life on those pills and that they really 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 work so if Again, if you guys want to buy me some gas station sex pills, I will try them on the podcast and I'll report back how horny I get. Maybe we'll have to have a few more masturbation breaks. I'm not sure. But yeah, God damn, I respect her because her hair was, she also had on like five bumpets and I could tell she wasn't born here. Um, it, not in a racist way. Come on. Oh my God. I meant she was like from Alabama or some shit because she was, it was Uh, you know, they're like 10 years behind on hair trends. So, um, she looked like she had just walked out of a jams cheer competition from 2008. And I was like, I don't know something about a woman who wears a bump it in 2020. Like you also know that she probably gives great head and she's a, she's a freak. She's a kinky bitch. And it turns out I was right. Cause she takes the gas station sex pills and she, fucking advertises it all right so this all right now we're gonna go on over to a new corner of the podcast which is the body positivity corner welcome Uh, this is the time in our podcast where i want you to just take a second and think about yourself Think about you. This is honestly, after all, this is here for you. I want this to be helpful to you, the listener. I love you guys, okay? I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't have. That's not true at all, actually. That was a flat out lie. And I promise to never lie to you guys, so I'm just going to say right then, I was beginning to lie to you. I would do this if no one listened. If I was the last woman on earth, I would walk out to the, uh, the dome or whatever main site the aliens blasted and I would go out there with a megaphone every day and I would do this podcast. I wish I could do it more but um alas I'm not the only woman on earth so you guys only get it once a week but thank you so much for being here. So yeah the body positivity corner. This is something that I started doing and I just thought I would share this journey with you because yes, I am recovering from an eating disorder. I just statistically know a good amount of you guys are too. And so I've been setting challenges for myself every week to help me get over this. So right now I'm 23 years old. This is probably the best relationship I've had with my body ever. And I started doing this thing Um, this week I said, I'm going to wear one thing this week that scares me. So this is my challenge for next week. If you guys want to follow along and do it with me, please, I would love that. I would really love that and comment how it goes. Um, I'm going to be wearing tank tops this week. We're in a heat wave. I've always been self-conscious about my arms. 
which is fucking stupid and I hate that. So I'm just going to wear the goddamn tank top and I'm going to let you guys know how it goes. I really have been trying to heal myself. I've done a few things to help myself. I've been, um, you know, like I said, smoking less weed. I cleaned my closet out the other day, which cannot recommend enough. I set it up like a department store because I can't go to department stores anymore. And so I put like my items that I really like, my fall 2020 line in as this rack, like the first rack that I see when I walk into my closet. And it's just been so much fun. I don't know if any of you care about that, but that was a fun thing for me. Just to make your closet fun, make getting dressed fun, make getting up as fun as you possibly can and as stress-free as you possibly can. That's how we fight the saddies. Um, getting pepper has helped my mental health so much, much, just having something to get me up in the morning. That's why I also want to be a mom so much. I relate heavily to what Pete Davidson said, Pete Davidson says in that, um, interview with C, um, where he's like, you know, I want to have kids because it'll keep me around. It's something to keep me around. It's something to do. It's something to taking care of something else is really, really good for my mental health. It's also good for Pete Davidson's mental health. More proof that we're soulmates. If anyone knows Pete Davidson, I did send him my nudes a few, I don't know, like six months ago, like full on like butthole and vagina hole shot. I realized he doesn't even run his own Instagram. So I just sent that to his fucking eat intern. Um, but You know, if anyone has any connections to him, let him know that my butthole is waiting for him in the DMs. So that is really it. Thank you guys so much for listening. And thank you guys so much for watching. For those of you that watched along, I love you guys so much. You can follow me here on Spotify at Katie Killian. Follow me on Instagram at a known freak. And I will see you next Friday on Instagram, on YouTube, which is where I'm posting the video of this podcast. There you go. A little extra content there. Uh, I just flashed my whole tits and nipple. Whole tits and nipple to the video. Maybe tell them that I did so that they know. Okay. Oh, now my butthole's out. Oh my God. I haven't shaved it either, so it's crazy. Anyway, thank you guys.